Uh, so last video going through the paper from winter 22 um, from the A-level comp sci syllabus. Um, we just wrote and debugged this search value um, function, recursive function that takes a binary tree and finds a value. The problem that we had was um, we had the left and right pointer swapped. So if we were if we were lesser, we were going to the right, which is wrong. Um, and if we were bigger, we were going to the left, but it needs to be the other way around. Um, let's just put in the evidence. So search value was the evidence for C and got that. And then we're on to 3D, which is asking you to perform post-order traversal. Um, so you will know about in-order traversal because that uh, outputs the nodes in order. Um, you also have pre-order and post-order. And they're being nice here. They're very, very much telling you what it is. They're not asking you to remember the different traversal algorithms. So in a post-order traversal, you visit the left node first, then you visit the right node, and then you output the, the root of the sub-branch that you're on. Um, so let's define the new procedure and it wants to be recursive and it takes the root node as the parameter, which is going to be an integer. And we first of all need to visit the left node. So they're giving you this to help you. First of all, you need to, this is how you go left. This is the code to go left. Um, and just like search value called itself, we're going to make post order call itself. And similarly, we've got the code to go right. So if we recurse the function passing in the left pointer, that's going left. If we recurse the function passing in the right pointer, that's going right. However, we only need to do that if there's something to go to. So you've got to add in a conditional statement here saying, if there is something on the left, then go to the left. How do we check whether there is something on the left? So we want to look at the value of the left pointer and just check that it's not none. So if there is something on the left, go left. If there is something on the right, go right. So it's a nice seven mark question for writing six lines of code. And then finally, what we want to do is once we've visited the left subtree or the left node, once we've visited the right subtree, then we output the node that we're currently on. How do you output the node? It's asking you to get the value, just like they demonstrated in the search value function. Um, you say, at this current position, go to the middle value in the subarray because that's the value stored in the node. Um, let's add in the tests. So we want to put in our main method, I think, as well. Our main um, Python syntax. Main method, I'm not sure if main method is the correct term. That's a term that's used in Java. The main program, I guess. Um, call the function search value to find the. Oh, this so this is where we do our tests. We want to find fifteen, and we want to use the result from search value. So we didn't need to do those tests before. We were just checking whether the code we wrote for search value was working, and then what the tests helped us to realize was that what we've done didn't actually work. So it was quite helpful, but those tests weren't the evidence that you're required. This is how you're expected to test the function. Pass in 15, store the result, use the result to either output if the index of the value is found. So if the result is minus one, then we can say not found. Otherwise we can say found at index and then result. And what we need to do is call the procedure post order, and then that will print out the tree using post order traversal. Let's test it with their test now to see if it works. Python question 3.py, 
and then we've got an error because we need to pass in the root pointer when we call the post order procedure. Okay, so we find 15 at index one, which matches what's in the table. So the value 15 is stored at index one in the tree. And um, then post order seems to print 10. And then stop, which doesn't seem to be working. Hold on a sec. Python question tree dot pi. It's only printing 10. So what's happening? We're passing in the root pointer. The root pointer has a value of zero. So we check if the the node at zero at one is not none. Uh, one problem is I'm trying to return from a procedure, which I probably don't want to do. But I don't think that should affect it. Oh, it will affect it because returning will end the procedure because I've made it into a function. And the problem is that only the topmost layer of the stack was getting printed. So the last leaf node. Not sure why it wasn't 58. It seems like it's the last leaf node linked on the right. Oh, because the right traversal was happening second. All right, so if we take that away, then what we should see is that each recursive call will be able to finish. So each value will be able to get printed. Fingers crossed. Okay, so now it works. Um, let's just check with our example. So the following tree should be three, nine. So we go, go to the bottommost layer first. And like we said, the bottommost layer are these leaf nodes containing 10 and nine. However, we don't seem to be seeing 58 be printed. It's interesting. Let's just check that we've linked 58 properly. 58 coming from the right tree. Oh no, sorry, 58 is there, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you have a look at this tree, we're going three, nine, 25, 60, 50. So it prints each row of the tree's hierarchy one by one, starting from the bottom up. In our tree, we've got 10 and nine, and then three and 15 and 58. So 10, 9, and 3, hold on, 10, 9, and 3, and then 15, and 58, and then finally 20. So let's just take that code, let's put that in, and that was for 3D, no, sorry. That was for three I uh, three E one and the post order procedure. You must test as you go, that's what I'd advise. And then the screenshot finally. Just move that up a bit. Let's take the screenshot. Make sure it's the one with the right outcome. And then we finished all of the questions. Let's just spend some time now kind of trying to look at the mark scheme to see if what I've written matches what we see in the mark scheme. So we just type this into Google. Normally what happens, you just take the code and you get the mark scheme from one of these websites that seem to host. Let's just check. So for question one, what did we do? We declared um, an array with 100. I don't seem to mandate the comment, but I think you should put it anyway. For read file, we've got data array assigned as global. Ooh, okay, so one thing that we probably missed, so the Python code works because like I said, lists are mutable, therefore don't need global declarations. But what the example board wants us to do is kind of declare that it is global because they don't seem to appreciate. Um, it does say example code though. So maybe if you write code that still works, they would hopefully understand why it still works and still give you the marks. 
Um, you'll notice there's some exception handling here, but I don't think the paper asked us to do exception handling. So let's have a look. Oh, use appropriate exception handling. Totally did not read that. Um, so let's just add that in. So if we try to open the file, but we end up accepting a file not found error, file not found error, then let's display a message. Print can't open the file. So we completely missed that. Um, let's see what else. So did we do find values properly? We had some sort of loop, we've got casting. We looped through all array elements and we compared and we, yeah, I think we did that okay. And then for the bubble sort, Again, they want global, which we did that time. So we made sure to do it for bubble sort, but we didn't do it the time before. But yeah, try to remember, even though your code will work without a global declaration of a list, put it in because that's what they're expecting. Notice that this algorithm isn't using the more efficient version of the bubble sort that stops when it's sorted. So you can just do like n squared comparisons, or I guess in this case, they are decreasing the not search not 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 trying to swap from the sorted list which is good and then let's look at question two so the oop question um i still think you should use pseudocode style syntax though we've seen that in some of the past papers for attribute declarations <laughs> and notice here they want you to create um 15 separate variables which doesn't make any sense to me given that when you answer your paper two theory questions and you say why do we use arrays we use arrays to not make uh, a number of different variables but i'm sure that they would still give you the mark if you declared a list or an array of the variables instead um I noticed that they're using append, even though append is a list method, it's not an array, but it just shows if you want to start with an empty list and add them one by one, you can do that. Um, they seem to not be showing using loops, which is obviously the most sensible way to do things when you've got a repeated action happening multiple times. Uh, so what do we do? We defined player one and we passed in a list rather than separate variables. That also wouldn't work because hand does not require five separate arguments. So you'd need some square brackets here. So just be careful. Sometimes the code that they put in the mark scheme is wrong. You can see here where hand is defined. Oh, they did do five separate variables, sorry. So have we misinterpreted the question? When you declare a hand, takes five card objects as parameters. Ah, okay. Perhaps we have misinterpreted the question then because we packed the packed the five cards into a list um, rather than giving five separate arguments. So their code here does match the implementation. And have a look for calculate value. That pretty much matches. However, that wouldn't work because that's only looping four times and the player has five cards. Perhaps there's some confusion here for how range works. Because that definitely doesn't loop five times. That would do zero, one, two, three, and then stop. So yeah, be wary of the code in the mark schemes, that's what I would say. Um, and then let's just check the main method down here. That matches. And, oh, it says there's 20 nodes. Why would you loop 20 times? What does the question paper say? Oh, there was 20 nodes. Okay, interesting. 
So what this means for our OOP question is that when we're assigning the null values and we're linking them, uh, we definitely did assign, we did, definitely did create an array of 20, didn't we? So to make it complete, we need to go through and link all of the remaining nodes. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, um, and we want to, I think they should be linked on the left because in case you want to perform an insertion each time, create a link list for the free list. Ah, however, actually, because there's no deletion and they just tend to use plus one, you shouldn't actually need that code now in hindsight because this is already defaulted to the three non-values. So now they've tended, when you do get an insert question, all you get is three pointer equals three pointer plus one, because there's no chance for the nodes to go into a jumbled up, up order, because you don't need to delete a node. So it's not like a linked list approach. So they've actually changed the way that they've modeled this. So I see why now this has just three null values. So this will set up the null values for the extra 14 nodes. So we don't need to worry about that. And this is what we've done here. That's fine. And let's just check. Well, we know it works because we got it to work. Uh, let's just check the post order function. Don't need to cast that into a string because Python's print can print anything. Do they want us to print the pointers too? That's what they seem to be suggesting. Oh, we're passing in the node, oh, root node or index of root node. So we've done it using the index. So I assume that's fine. Okay, that's it.